Okay, so now in this video, we'll actually do the cloning step. Okay, so what I have open is I still have the CIT 93 course organization. I have my profile, so I went over to my profile and I opened it another tab, so I'll show you why in a minute. And I also have the instructions set up here. I am recording this video for the spring 2024 semester, so if you saw this, I had in the video before that was from fall 23 shown the other semester, but other than that, uh, as long as you have that base folder set up, you should be good to go. So what we're going to do now is, like I said, now we're going to clone, right? So we're going to take the repos, both the private and the public, and I recommend doing the private one first because it's going to ask you for the authentication step. And I'm going to do the authentication step, and that basically means your logon step, in a very uh, simple, straightforward way. But there are other ways you could do this authentication. And now that GitHub is requiring of many users to use what's called two-factor. I actually am recording this to see if there's any differences in the way that um, I have sh traditionally shown students how to do this. Okay, so again, here I have this. And so now on my VS Code, I have that base folder set up as I talked about before. And I do like to, in here, go into Terminal. Uh, and to show you uh, that that base folder uh, is the default folder that it's opened. Um, and that's what you're basically telling VS Code. I've built this folder. Now, whenever I go into, def um, into terminal, use that as what we call my root folder or my default folder is the way you can think of it. So this is the location from which we'll clone the two repos that we have set up. Now, a clone is, is in a sense copy, but it's copy with connection, copy with authentication, so that anytime you work locally, right, which we will do uh, from here on, uh, when you're coding and you're doing the Git workflow that you'll learn next, when you're doing all that, then you're working locally and pushing code to GitHub, okay? All right, so let's do this really, really important step. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the private. Again, I recommend doing the private one first, OK? So in here, uh, when you click into uh, your private repo, and you can tell it's the private one because it has a lock, and I come over here and I look at the different ways I can clone, uh, we're going to clone HTTPS, uh, secured HTTP. Um, basically, there is other ways to also clone, and as you learn more of GitHub, you definitely want to learn the other ways. This is just a very simplified way to do it. Uh, so I use this little icon to copy. You could select the whole thing and copy it as well. So now coming back to VS Code here, uh, now I'm going to do the command that I showed in uh, Canvas, which is git git space clone. Now, I could type out that full URL where I want it to clone from, the reference, uh, but I can actually just here copy that. Okay, now here's the important step, and I definitely say rec I recommend watching me do it before you go to do it, just in case you run into anything here. Now, in Windows, when you do this, it turns white, and if you just click uh, anywhere here or use your arrow keys, um, actually clicking didn't work, but using my arrow keys, it now prepares the command to run. So don't let that throw you off, right? So if I backspace, I can just uh, do that, type it over. Now, before I hit this, I'm going to tell you what it's going to do is it's going to ask you to, it's going to give you some options for the way that you can authenticate. You can sign into your account. For those of you that are interested, one of the things you can do if you want to use web tokens, again, I don't really recommend it, but I want to show you that that's an option because if you do, uh, if you select one of the options here and you want to use web tokens, I just want to show you how to use it. Now, if you're just going to do it the simplified way, just kind of keep this as FYI in case it ever comes up. Okay, so before I hit enter here, I'm going to go back over here to my browser. I'm going to go to the tab I had set open with my profile for GitHub, right? So I just went over to the icon and then you scroll down to developer options. 
under developer options, you have this thing called a personal access token. And at this point, I probably use the classic one and you can create a token. Now I'm not going to actually create one here because I'm going to show the more straightforward method, but in general, you can give it a name. You can tell it how long it expires for, you can do custom, no expiration. Um, but in this case, generally you want to do repo so that it selects all those. Um, you know, we're not really doing packages here, so that shouldn't be, but admin, uh, not on the org, because that's what I have. Um, there should really, I think, be nothing else you need here to do, and then you would just create the token. Now, when you do that, again, I'm going to actually, I guess I will show you uh, delete later, <laughs> just because I'm about to show the internet uh, a token that I'm not going to use. But so when I do that, then I get this web token. Okay, and again, I don't want you to be thinking you have to do it this way, okay? But it's really important at this stage, if you're going to, is you copy it. Because once you leave this screen, then it's gone, okay? So anyway, now everybody else back here, and I'm going to, again, delete that later. When I hit enter here, if I'm using web tokens, then I would want to select a different option that I'm about to select, okay? So that's where you could use that token and you could just copy and paste it right there. Okay. And sign in with that token. But what I'm going to have you do uh, is actually, I'm just going to have, again, you can use the other option, but just sign in with the browser. And what this is going to do, it's going to open your browser session. And, and again, you want to be logged in to uh, whatever, you know, your browser here is to GitHub. If not, make sure you do that. You've probably already done that because you grabbed the URL. So I'm going to go ahead and say, sign in uh, with the browser. Okay. Now, when I do that, it quickly goes over to a new setup, but when I come back to VS code, then it actually did this step of kind of doing the web token in a way for me, uh, and then brought me back to my prompt. But notice when it did this, if you got this done successfully, and again, I don't want you to get it confused by the whole web token thing. I just show that in case for some reason you run into an issue and you have to use it. I actually thought with 2FA, which is two-factor, I might have to use it for the semester, but it looked like I wasn't required to. So again, trying to keep it somewhat simple, but also understand the process. So at this point, I now see I have a new folder under that default folder. Okay, so here is where the cloning process created that folder on my local system for whatever I had out there. So in this case, the gitignore and the readme file, okay? Okay, so that's the process of cloning. So now let's actually go clone the other one so that you can have both of them set up. So now I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time I'm going to grab the public one, okay? And on the public one, similar thing, I'm gonna copy this or copy that URL come down here. Now, what's really important here is to not change the directory in terminal, which you might not even know how to do, but it is just because what you want to do is when you do this step that we're about to do is we want to have both of those folders be at what we call the same level or underneath that uh, root folder. So now I'm going to actually going to hit clear real quick. Okay, and I'm gonna, and I could use the up arrow. The up arrow will bring back, and this is just good to know in general, especially as you're learning terminal. Now notice that when I do up arrow, this actually brings back the last command that I did. So um, that was, a, and I don't want to do this one again. So in a sense, I could just backspace this, right? And then paste in the new one, right? Or I could just go all the way back and type it again. And now I'm gonna, now here's what's important. Notice how, and again, clicking here, I'm using my arrow keys just to, because that's just Windows in the, creating that white uh, background to show you that it's been pasted in. But notice the difference in the URL here, right? So I did the private one first, and now I'm gonna do the public one. Now this one doesn't require authentication, because it's public. Anyone out on the web can see this one. So if when I hit enter, in this case, it's it's not that it's already authenticated, which might make you think this is true, but in this case, it's not. Um, but 
more than anything, what you want to have is when you finish this step is you want to have both of your repos in that default folder. Now, as we move through the course, I'll actually show you uh, different times that you might want to actually create or open these folders uh, as them being the root. And here's what I mean by that, just to give you one more additional step. If I go into the folder, now I see these two. And if I click in here and say select, and then that opens that uh, default as my default or my root. And then if I go into terminal here, that becomes my default or my root folder, okay? Or the, uh, the default folder that it opens for me. And if I ever wasn't sure how I had it open, I could always do PWD to show me what folder I'm currently inside of in the terminal. Because there's a difference between what's showing here and what's down in the terminal. Because one of the things you will learn to do is to navigate folders uh, through the terminal, or I'll also show you how to do it from uh, the VS Code interface. Matter of fact, I'll probably show you this again in the next video, but I'm going to show you it here. Now notice how here are all the recent folders I have open. So I could hit either open folder or open recent. So I'm just going to do folder to be more clear. I'm going to go to documents, 93 or 94, sorry, not 94, but 24. And notice how by default is coming back into here, right? And if I hit clear, just to clear it up, notice that's my default folder. And then if I was working on a document in here, and I'm going to learn this next, right, is learn how to actually do the Git workflow, such an important part. But one of the things I can do to change my current PWD, again, you're going to get a repeat here, is I can say open an integrated terminal. And what that does is it changes it. But one cool thing I can do is CD back, uh, CD space dot dot. That'll actually take me back one directory as well. So learning how to navigate navigate this is really, really helpful. So let's finish this up by just reviewing the steps that you've done, right? So in this case, you're going to see a new video uh, from the spring 2024. So you're ready to go ahead and continue on to learn about the Git workflow. Such, a, such an important part. This last part is really the part you'll be doing once you do the setup again and again. Again, a little bit of duplicate never hurts with this uh, important information. I hope you work through that. If you have any uh, questions, please reach out.